Good day, welcome to Music Motors. Welcome to the 2021 Mercedes Sprinter. Now, this isn't any normal Sprinter, this is a 315 the new 1.9 litre diesel engine and a 9G Tronic gearbox. None of this 3147 G Tronic or manual, this is a very interesting new platform. Obviously, as we know, that 1.9 litre diesel engine gives you 150 horsepower, 340 newton meters of torque, but let's be honest, it's also capable of taking over a ton of payload weight whilst returning over 32 to the gallon WLTP, like real world. Now, with prices starting at about 26 plus VAT, this one's 42 plus VAT because it has a huge range of options. In this episode of Music Motors, I put the Sprinter to the real world test. None of this, what it says on paper, just a real world putting it through the paces. If you enjoy the video, stick around, give me a like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. Now, obviously, outside the Sprinter a couple of years ago had a fairly substantial update. What this means is that, within reason, you've got this nice, quite stylish, but in keeping with the Mercedes brand, design on the outside. It is quite good looking. On the front end, you've got a very strong design. The three-pronged star right up there, giving you a nice big grille, good design, nice light cluster. Also has advanced parking, effectively, so there's no chance of you hitting anything unless you're not really paying attention. Side profile, well, it's pretty difficult to look unique, but Mercedes have done a pretty good way of putting some extra lines in there, and it is obviously very sprinter from the side profile. If you've seen one of these, you, you know it's a sprinter over a Crafter, a Decato, or you know any of the competitor vehicles. Being an H2 L2, this isn't obviously the biggest you can get. I'm used to seeing these as, at minimum, really, an L3, but as an L2, this actually doesn't look very strange, especially with an H2. I was expecting this to look a little bit, I don't know, squished, and it doesn't, especially from that side profile point of view anyway. Back end, obviously, that normal light cluster where we're used to, where this is a premium, it's then got premium badging underneath the Sprinter model um, design effectively. But the back end is unique to Mercedes. This doesn't look like any other van out there. Generally, outside, this has a very Mercedes look and this silver, iridium silver metallic is a really, really lovely look that, being brutally honest, hides the muck really well. I mean, when you get up close, you can see it, but in comparison to the fact that this time last year I had a black sprinter on, on test and that one showed uh, very, very well. I mean, when it was clean, it looked epic, but this silver really, really hides the muck. And generally outside, it looks great. This one's got hubcaps instead of the standard wheels we're used to seeing, and it's actually quite a nice change. Whilst you do have to kind of be a little bit more considerate of your wheels, you know, you are gonna scratch hubcaps, where generally you wouldn't scratch the, the usual wheels that you get with these they do really kind of suit the part and match with that silver on silver on silver on the outside of this van. In the real world, fuel economy is actually kind of important when it comes to commercial vehicles because let's face it, jobs are what jobs are. They cost what they cost, you get what you get. So return on investment, especially when it comes to fuel economy is really important. So part of a two part test, this is my first part, this is multi-drop this is doing actual couriering around town seeing what the actual fuel economy can turn around when it's being put through real world town tests none of this just driving around actual deliveries let's go It got a little dark there, so I thought it was probably best that I did it during daylight, the summering. So over that entire journey, that was 20 miles, it averaged 28 to the gallon. The biggest thing is that I, I wasn't sure, it's a smaller engine, but it still has a good amount of power, it still has a good amount of torque. I didn't know how exactly it was going to do. The reality is it actually did better than I expected because that 9G Tronic box around town is silky smooth. That engine is quiet and refined. And 
It just feels really peppy when you need it to be. But then when it came to the actual logistics part of it, obviously it's a van, it takes more than enough stuff, but it's easy to jump in and out of. There's a step here, you don't fall two stories. That's what it feels like anyway. When you get out some competitive vehicles because of how high this is and the fact they don't have a step in there. That overall result means that, you know, the drive's quite refined. The fuel economy's fantastic. And let's be honest, 28 for an actual multi-drop Amazon run, that was pretty good. Put that with the fact that you then don't feel so tired because the drive is really comfortable and really refined. It means that Mercedes have done something pretty exceptional in making this a real van for the everyday. Inside Mercedes have the upper hand on literally every other brand because the interior of this van is miles ahead of everyone except realistically the only close Volkswagen in the Crafter. And even then, Volkswagen still aren't quite there. You get in, you immediately feel build quality. You have a lovely visibility and you've got an insane amount of standard tech. Whilst you can option for things like electric wing mirrors with folding and you can have all sorts of different bits and pieces put in kind of to your spec. As standard, these give you so much technology and forward collision assist, really it's a no-brainer as to why these are becoming quite a uh, popular van throughout most businesses. Whilst they do cost more money than the competitors, the safety, the economy and everything else kind of, that's why. This has got the comfort seat specced in and they are truly very, very comfortable. Even with the bench seat next to me, where very often I say your passengers are gonna be slightly more uncomfortable because it's quite upright and quite a rigid ride, quite firm generally when it comes to the passenger seats. This one with the comfort seats is seriously, seriously comfortable, even for your, your passengers. Obviously, headroom is fantastic, depending if you've got that overhead storage for in the cab or you've got it in the load area. It totally depends where you're putting it as to the, the kind of height that you have. But even if you do have that uh, extra storage going in for the rear end of the, the vehicle, for the cargo area, you still have a decent amount of space. Inside it's very, very quiet. And as I said, the visibility is just absolutely fantastic. A lot of competitors end up having a lot of blind spots. So as a result, when you first get in them, you really have to get used to them. Whereas the Sprinter, well, really you struggle to have a blind spot because well, the window's huge. There isn't a lot of ingress for the safety features. And doors wise, the windows aren't intruding too much. So as a result, well, you can see everything pretty, pretty easily. Tech-wise, everything's at your fingertips, especially when you come to the 7G Tronic, you literally don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel. You can control the infotainment on the steering wheel. The infotainment has DAB, the infotainment has you know, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and if you go for the bigger display, then it's even updating the um, TFT display in front of the driver. Obviously, the standard one doesn't have a lot of information in there. It's just a little bit, you know, not as fancy, but if you go for the bigger infotainment, you also get an updated display, which then makes the, inter the interior of this feel even more like a C or an E-Class. This one's got Climatronic, which is quite handy, I'm gonna be brutally honest. It's quite nice to be able to just go, I want it to be 17 degrees, especially when it comes to a van. And on a premium, it's, well, standard. The only thing that isn't standard on the interior is the comfort seats and that's about it otherwise everything else and I do literally mean everything else is standard as to what you get on a premium low capability wise there's absolutely loads of space loads of tie down points getting in and out really easy and it's a good amount of space yeah this can take over a ton of payload weight and that's as a 315 if you go for a a big like 519 you can take you know over two tons of payload weight and yet I know there are competitive vehicles that take more than this but they don't give you the, the same quality that this vehicle does. So that kind of explains why, because you've got more lux luxuries that are taking up more weight, basically. Obviously, with, we have established an urban run, pretty decent, 28 miles to the gallon, but what does it get when it's less pure urban? To find out, I'm going to throw this on and do some deliveries. this way now. The 
big thing really was to establish just what fuel economy to turn around when it comes to something else, and that was a 35.5 miles to the gallon. And as per the pure economy test of being urban, the visibility is good, the throttle response is great, and it is really comfortable and easy to manoeuvre being an L2 instead of an L3, L4. Really, this is a fantastic van when it comes to economy and drive and everything else, and it just has proved itself to me not just around town but as everything else and on the motorway it does everything really really well performance wise so 150 horsepower 340 newton meters of torque and it can take over a ton of payload weight while still returning 32 miles to the gallon combined wltp so the big thing is this is the 1.9 litre diesel instead of the 2.1 that we've seen in three, uh, 314s for ages. The 315 has kind of changed the game for me because this 9G Tronic, and don't get me wrong, this 7G Tronic is absolutely fine but at times it's a little laggy to get up and go to so end up kind of riding the brake and the throttle at the same time to, to get off the mark. The 315 with the 9G Tronic is like epically responsive. You touch and you go. The paddles are really, really responsive and genuinely it's just completely changed how dynamic this van is to drive. And I'm saying dynamic because it really is. Unlike a lot of competitors, this handles really well. This doesn't feel like it's got a lot of body roll, but equally soaks up the road. How many times have you got in a van and you've gone over a pothole and it's like obliterated a couple of discs in your back? The sprint is actually really smooth, but equally then doesn't roll through the corners too badly. The steering response is lovely and light and still offers you feedback to the driver. The throttle is instantaneous and the brake's got a great feel. I mean, from a commercial's point of view, up until this came out, this was unheard of. Manual-wise, look, I have no issues with the manual boxes and sprinters. I did somewhat in the previous version because they had a habit of getting a little notchy as they went on through the years. Um, but the manual box is still pretty decent in the new one. Really then, manual boxes are the only place that Volkswagen have it over Mercedes because, to be brutally honest, the, the manual box is okay in the Sprinter. It, it's absolutely okay. But the manual box in the Crafter actually feels really, really nice and smooth. Economy-wise is when Mercedes have the upper on literally everyone. Because on paper they say this can get 32 miles to the gallon, but in reality, I discovered that around town the worst you're going to see is about 28. 26 if you drive like a real knob but if you're willing to just be a little bit more gentle with the throttle on a normal run you're going to see over 35 on the motorway if you sit at 60 miles an hour you will get over 40 miles to the gallon it's just absolutely insane and from an auto box i mean historically autos weren't the, the efficient ones but this auto box is really really good the only annoying thing is it sits at like 2,000 RPM when you're sat at 60 miles an hour. Same as the 7G Tronics, it's around that sort of mark. So you get slightly more engine ingress, as it were. But then again, the cabin noise is quite quiet, so really it's not that bad. Performance-wise, this drives above anything else really in the segment. Don't get me wrong, the Crafter, which is the closest, drives really, really lovely. But it has a bit more of an understeery feel. It, it, it feels more disconnected. Whereas the Sprinter is just a really genuinely engaged drive from a van point of view. You get into a competitive vehicle, no one really scratches it quite as well as Mercedes does. So aesthetically, I like it. Front end's pretty cool, quite nicely put together. Prefer it as a long wheelbase or an extra long wheelbase, but that's my personal preference. There's bundles of colors you can choose and more options than you can you know, even choose to imagine when it comes to specifying your perfect exterior but I like it. The side profile is distinct with nice lines and it is Mercedes through and through, front side and back. The interior is worlds above where most people are, to be brutally honest. And yeah, you have to spend a bit of money to get the really, really technologically advanced stuff, but for what you get a standard, it's also pretty crazy. And then low capability wise, you know, over a ton of payload weight, it's easy to use, it's pretty robust. What more could you really ask for and performance i mean look it's not a fast van there are faster vans out there or you could just go for a 319 but the economy is fantastic this is the 1.9 litre diesel it's nice and refined to drive and the gearbox is silky silky smooth the economy is fantastic 
And from a driving point of view, it is fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And then let's go on for that three-year unlimited mileage uh, warranty from factory, mobile van, you know, unlimited breakdown if you, um, as long as you're getting it maintained by Mercedes. And don't think that Mercedes commercials are anything like Mercedes passenger cars. If you go into Mercedes passenger car dealership and you have anything like an E-Class, yeah, the dealership's probably gonna bend you over. And that's from first, first-hand experience. But Mercedes commercials seem to have this better relationship with their customers. They don't rip you off. They ensure that you actually get what you pay for, but it's also at a reasonable price. Keep on top of that and you get that unlimited breakdown cover and that's like European wide almost. In fact, it could even be worldwide. So long as it's basically getting looked after by them because then they know it's been kept up to a certain standard. And then smart software, well, there's loads of it. You can see everything about how this is being driven, when things are due, where it's been, you can geofence it. And whilst I know a lot of competitors are offering that, this is just done and implemented so easily into a singular app. It just shows Mercedes have decided to make this a real vehicle of the future, a real vehicle to safeguard you against how everything's changing in the future. So the 2021 Mercedes Sprinter, in whatever format you get it in, you're gonna be pretty impressed. It looks great, the interior is comfortable, robust, hard wearing, and the performance can't really be matched by any competitors when it comes to an all round performance. This does a pretty exceptional job of being exceptional at all times. That's no favoritism. Craft is fantastic. That's the only real competitor direct to this. But this is just worlds above everyone else. And it's still ahead of the crafter, considering they're not really that far off in price. 